Welcome to Frontender. Let's learn about the Shadow DOM. Computer science has a key concept of encapsulation or abstraction. Um, web components enable that and they have the same concept. The goal is to keep the markup, the styling and the JavaScript behavior clean and abstracted and just away from the DOM application. This is important because the application sometimes just doesn't need to know about the details or the DOM of that component. It also keeps the DOM clean. Um, so it, it helps overall. Basically, a shadow DOM or, a, or the shadow DOM tree can be attached to the regular visible DOM um, using this concept or enablement of shadow DOM. What are the key concepts in a, in a shadow DOM, right? Like, so here's the illustration. The purple represents the DOM and the pink represents the shadow DOM. So the, the, in the purple DOM tree, there is a node which attaches to the shadow DOM tree. And that node is the uh, shadow host. It's hosting the shadow DOM. And the node on the shadow DOM, which at its root, that root node is the shadow root. Pretty simple. And the whole bound, the whole set of nodes in the shadow DOM, you know, make this shadow DOM tree. And the perimeter of this, uh, uh, the boundaries of this shadow DOM tree is the shadow boundary. The analogy of the shadow DOM is, is really interesting. At least the one I chose. I love Star Wars. So the mini figure here with all its open nodes, like you can see exactly the different pieces that come together. That represents like the, the DOM tree. And the the the, the Hasbro style uh, Stormtrooper, like you don't know how it's put together, um, the fusion points and the different pieces, but that it represents as a whole a, uh, a big Stormtrooper and then they are attached. <laughs> you see it's like one is lifting up the other. That in those in combination represent the DOM in the minifigure and the shadow DOM uh, as in the um, the, the big uh, stormtrooper. Some famous examples are like the video element, right? Like you have all these native controls, but you don't actually see it. It's abstracted. You don't need to see it. Um, so that's a really good application that's like built in of for demonstrating the shadow DOM by the video element. Like practical usages is if you're building a component library and you know you know your consumers don't need to know the structure, then it's a good case for creating a shadow DOM. If you have, if your business is to create third-party libraries, then you can create these components as encapsulated components so the style doesn't bleed out uh, in or out of the component. So that's another use case, really solid use case for using the shadow DOM. Let's talk about usage, right? Uh, so a shadow DOM can be created in open or closed mode. In open mode, you can, the enveloping JavaScript can see the, the shadow DOM and has all these different nodes and can manipulate it. Uh, if you do create the shadow DOM in closed mode, then you can't really see the different components. It's kind of abstracted or the different parts of the DOM tree. So you can create it in either open mode or closed mode and attach it to the visible DOM. Um, and the shadow DOM similarity with DOM is like, you can use all the same APIs. So that's like the best part, right? Uh, you can use your, you know, up in childs, like create elements, set attributes, you know, you can, you can use all the same awesome, um, native DOM APIs on the shadow DOM as a regular DOM, which is really, really nice. Okay. So that concludes this quick web bite to understand and learn about the shadow DOM. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.